24, I think. Yeah, something like that. It wasn't that expensive. Yeah. Let me click on the back and I'll tell you. Uh, let's see. Let's see, what was it? I don't know, do you have a polarizer for your For, your for this one? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. We got the fisheye, fisheye lens. Yeah. Oh, not 30.5. I don't know if I have smaller than that. Let me take a look. You just never know. Alright, that's pretty good. I got the fisheye lens I was looking for. And um, that guy's pretty cool. He's been in business for a long time. I'm going to go over here to the cannabis store and see if I can get some shred. I'll take the receipt though. Oh, yes, of course. There you go. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. See ya. So I was in there and I asked her if I could film, and she said no. I don't know, I didn't ask why, I didn't question, but I still filmed anyways. That's the, th that's the slick thing about this camera, is that I can get away with filming inside places a lot easier. Yeah, so this is what I came out here to St. Catharines for, is this device. I used to buy this thing 15 years ago, and I got them for $25 cash each. I bought you know, I had to go ahead and bought two because I'm never gonna see these in person again in a camera store. So I, I bought all the guys, all the stock that he had. Uh, and these online are selling for triple the price at what I paid. Like it's actually, it's actually kind of crazy. Double, double, triple the price. And the guy in the store even mentioned that himself. He's like, I sell these online for twice as much than I'm, what I'm selling them to you for. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna, I like to use this for these uh, old school cameras. The fisheye effect is what got me into you know, filming skate footage and shit. So I bought two because I'll end up probably breaking one or losing one or scratching one eventually. So I have a backup and I have another camcorder I could use it on as well. Anyways, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go roll up my seven grams of shred I got. Seven grams for $25, excellent deal. Actually I paid $29. That's $5 cheaper than what I paid for it in Milton. That's crazy. I was just grabbing a Starbucks from across the street of the dispensary. I got a Pike Dark Roast Black. And then look what I noticed. Literally right across the street from the other dispensary we just visited, there is another cannabis shop right there. And that's like literally a block away. You can see one dispensary from the other when you walk out the door. It's like having a Tim Hortons across the street here from the Starbucks. All right, I made it to the beach here in Port Dalhousie. A little winter, Canadian winter scape here at the beach of Lake Ontario. And check this out. Way in the distance there, if I take off my lens, 
Yeah, you can see the homeland. Toronto. I'm gonna zoom out. This is the beach that we're at. Got some waves coming in today. And it's kind of windy. So let's go for a stroll on the beach. I'm not staying too long here. I'm gonna continue my adventure through the town of Port Dalhousie. You can see how fast the current's moving here. I went inside this uh, market, got a pretzel and some pico de gallo from uh, El Chiringuito Smoothies and Snack Bar. Colombian, Colombian little shop there. It was a cool place. Uh, it's inside, inside here, Lock and Main Marketplace. So this is Lock Street, downtown Port Dalhousie. I mean, probably the only part of downtown. This is a very small city. Uh, but I wanted to get a shot of this here. Lock Street Brewing Company. This place, I guess, makes beer and liquor, but I just love the name of the uh, title. Lock Street. Well, I'll get out of the road because I'm, I'm in the middle of the road here. You know, Lock Street, like... Dreadlocks. So a little history about this town of Port Dalhousie. World-renowned serial killer Paul Bernardo and his estranged wife, girlfriend, Carla Homolka, actually lived in this neighborhood and the house that where they carried out a bunch of these hideous, hideous crimes um, is no longer here, but the street is just down the road, so I'm gonna go take you to the to the property. It's 57 Bayview Avenue here in St. Catharines, Port Dalhousie. So I'm on the street now. Let's go. Uh, it says I, I it says I'm not too far from it, like four minutes away. So let's go check it out. So this was the property. I guess they've rebuilt it since then. I think it was on this land right here. Because the number goes from 53, 55, and then to 61. So there was definitely a demolition and rebuilt, rebuilt this here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the property. It used to be Paul Bernardo's house. Although this is not Paul Bernardo's house, this house looks crazy custom modernly built. Anyways, that's it. Uh, it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna head back home. Yeah, so this was definitely the corner, corner house where it used to be. A few telltale signs is the, um, this fire hydrant here and the intersection of the sidewalks right here you'll be able to see in old photographs that this is the same intersection. So they've definitely rebuilt the house here. Kristen, Mah or Leslie, and <clears throat> another girl here were uh, and tortured and killed here. And then this guy went on a rampage as a, as a Scarborough rapist as well. 1993 he got caught. Yeah, nasty. It says according, Leslie Mahaffey, 14, and Kristen French, 15, were the victims at this house here. This is known as Canada's House of Horrors, where two teenage girls were held captive, raped and murdered by Bernardo and his ex-wife, Carla Harmalka. How would you feel about living in that property there after all that happened? I mean, I'm sure it's still fine to live there.
Welcome to Burlington Beach. We uh, have left the Niagara region. And this beach is just as nice down here. Only difference are these power lines.